Hey guys, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. I hope you're somewhere warm in the world. Um, so we lost power again last night in the dead of winter in the middle of an ice storm. It seems like the entire country has just been sucked into the Arctic because I know as far down south as like Texas, there was like a massive snowstorm and a lot of people lost power. But up here in Pennsylvania, we just got your mild mannered ma massive ice storm last night. And uh, we lost power last week for about 18 hours or something like that. So there's just rain and sleet and ice, you know, slamming against my, uh, my, my room all night. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm really hoping the power doesn't go out. That would really suck. And so I'm sitting here, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm playing uh, Shovel Knight the King of Cards on my Switch, and then just like... <sighs> just illuminated by nothing but my Switch screen, and just... Well, shit. So I just went to bed, I uh, threw some blankets on my bed, put a hat on, and I'm like, I'm just... I just, please turn back on before I wake up, and it turned back on right before I woke up, so that was good, that was good, but then I was outside, I literally, we have like a cement porch, um, like, I'm like, I don't think salt is gonna eat through this, so I was out there with a freaking sledgehammer this morning, breaking ice off of my porch, so, you know, if you ever want to visit Pennsylvania, that's just a standard what you're probably gonna have to deal with at least once a year, okay. So, um, I'm, I apologize for all of that. I was on a rant there. Uh, what, what are we talking about today, Barry? What the hell are we even doing? Okay, it's a Bleach video. Uh, we're doing the Lieutenant series of the Gote. Who did I say last time? Last time was Isane. He's like, oh, Eba! Eba, okay. All right, we'll talk about Eba. Oh, look, I have a Tonto right here. That's convenient. Uh, okay, so cool. Um, yeah, uh, Tetsu Zaimon Eba, the Lieutenant of the 7th Division under, uh, Sajin Komamura. All right, so he's a guy that doesn't get a lot of screen time. But he makes up for it because he has a tattoo of a kitty cat on his back that uh, I think says inviting luck in the kanji right there. So that makes up for it right there, okay? That just goes to show that even if you have a character that doesn't show up very often, as long as the character has an interesting design, then it's all okay, right? Actually, it, it you know, it kind of does and doesn't because whenever Kubo comes out with a character that looks really cool like Iba, you know, I like his shades, I like his hairstyle, he's basically like like a Yakuza member, right? And it's just like, all right, that's cool. You could do something with him, with his backstory and everything, you know? Like, what's up with Eba? And it's like, we never find out. So, you know, I guess that's up for the fans to decide, you know, write a fan fiction about Eba and how he joined. I, I imagine Eba, okay, I'll just come up with the um the, the headcanon right out of the gate. Why not, right? It's Eba we're talking about here. I imagine Eba was like a gang leader in the Rukongai, right? Like maybe he grew up in an area in like the 70s, uh, maybe the 60s of Rukongai, you know, in a situation in a pretty bad area of town. And he was basically the Yakuza leader or the mafia leader there. And uh, he was pretty strong. He had some pretty decent, you know, spiritual pressure or whatever. And so uh, he decided to, you know, I, I don't know, maybe some Shinigami came because his, his power was getting a little bit too, you know, crazy. He was getting too much influence. So some Shinigami, Tommy came to like, you know, like arrest him or whatever, and then he beat them down. And I don't know, maybe he ran into like Sajin. Maybe Sajin was the one that like is like he's like, oh well, you know, you can't be doing this. And then he beat down uh Eba, and then Eba decided to join the Gote 13 because of that. That's that's something to work with. Actually, Probably not. I mean, maybe, maybe not, because we actually do know something about Iba's past. We know about his mom. His mother was Chikane Iba, who was the former lieutenant under Rose, uh, Rojuro Ochorobashi, during Turn Back the Pendulum. We don't get to see Chikane Iba during Turn Back the Pendulum, but we see the cover page, and so she was, in fact, um, the, uh, the lieutenant at that time. So, I don't know, maybe, you know, she was, like, a, a member of the, of the Gote 13, and maybe her son decided to go be a gang leader somewhere. Given the fact he does have the Yakuza appearance, I like to think that he probably did something with that. Either that, or he just thinks it, lo it really looks cool, you know, whatever. He's got, like, the bandages on his waist, and that's where he keeps his Zompok to you know, it's just like a, a tiny little tonto he pulls out there. Um, you know, he's got the tattoo on his back, which is indicative of a lot of, like, Yakuza members in Japan, right? Um, they got the tats and everything like that. Okay, cool. Um, after the, uh, at the end of the story, during the epilogue, he gets a pompadour. Uh, so he looks kind of like, uh, Kuwabara from, <laughs> from Yu Yu Hakusho. We'll just roll with that, right? And he's got the shades and everything. He gets his sunglasses from, uh, the Silver Dragonfly Sunglass Shop, I think it's called. Uh, Gein 
green tone bow. It's the same place where Renji got his really cool futuristic goggles. But the interesting thing about Iba, though, I will say, is that Kubo kind of, like, almost gives us footholds into his past almost kind of is like right about to tell us a little bit about Iba's like relationship with Ikaku and everything and like we're gonna go into a little bit with that um we just never go full force into that right so Iba the first thing he does in the story that's actually substantial is that uh Iba alongside his captain Sajin alongside uh Tozen and Shuhei decide to go up against Kenpachi and his his squad okay because Kenpachi is of course you know you know all about fighting and everything and like craziness and he's trying to find Ichigo and he's kind of like leaning on the side of the Ryoka at that point and Tozen and Komamura you know, we all know what happened with Tozen, but Komamura is very much trying to live up to, like, the lawful good nature of, you know, justice and everything. You know, doing things for the right cause and everything like that. Um, he's probably the most, um... He's honestly probably the most for that out of all of the Gote 13, really. Uh, because as we even stated with the, I actually have it right here, you know, the uh, Can't Fear Your Own World at the beginning of that, and I've read this before, but it's a very interesting look into how Shinigami are brought up and how they are taught. Um, you know, seek not aesthetic in war, seek not virtue in death. Think not of thine own life, should thee seek to protect thy king and the five dukes. Slay all foe as indifferently as shadows of leaves. So basically, it's like, once again, like the ninja code, or like the shinobi code, or whatever. Like, stab your enemy from behind, or whatever. Justice, uh, you, you know, the honor of the sword. That's not really what the Gote's about, but Komamura kind of embodies that more than any other captain. Maybe Biakia as well. Biakia is a very justice-centered captain, right? Okay. Uh, but, you know, Iba also kind of follows along with that alongside Sajin, okay? So they all go to try to stop Kenpachi, and Iba squares off against Ikaku, and you know, you think like, oh, they're just gonna get into a straight-up fight, you know, somebody might die here, but as we cut over to the fight, we actually see them chilling out. Like, they fought for a little while, Ikaku and Iba, and now they're just, you know, hanging out on the side, and remember how Ikaku with his, uh, you know, Hozoki Maru, he had that, like, ointment on the, uh, the, the hilt of the sword, he takes out the ointment to, like, you know, uh, stop the bleeding of certain wounds and stuff like that was that was another thing about bleach that i like that kubo did you know characters are getting slashed and stuff and there was that moment where ichigo wipes the blood away from his eye and ikaku's like you know even shallow wounds above the eye will bleed profusely and the blood trickles back down and gets in ichigo's eye and then ikaku's like well i got this ointment so ha 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 that was so cool because that added a layer of like realism do you know how many times in manga or anime a character gets sliced up or cut up or whatever they got blood in their eye, they're bruised and whatever. In any other normal circumstance, you know, that would hinder you in combat. You get blood in your eye, or it's like, oh, you sliced my arm. Not a big deal. It's like, yeah, it is a big deal. You just got, like, part of your muscle cut. You're not gonna be able to swing a sword with that arm anymore, right? But of course, later on in Bleach, that kind of goes by the wayside, but I like that little moment in the early parts of the story. And so we cut over to Iba and Ikaku, and Iba, you know, he's got the ointment on him, and Ikaku put the ointment on him. So they're friends, like, they're comrades. Obviously, they're comrades, as they were both in the Gote, but there's more of a relationship with that. We find out that Iba was originally a member of the 11th Division with Ikaku under Kenpachi and all that stuff, uh, but eventually he got transferred to the 7th Division. Credo in life, his kind of philosophy here to be a good member of the Gote, to rise through the ranks, and he says this to Ikaku, is like, I trained in all these different aspects of battle. I wasn't just, you know, into fighting with the sword, you know, brute combat in um, the 11th Division. I trained in Kido, I trained in Shunpo, I trained in, in Hakuda, and all the four combats, you know, I'm not, like, the master of any of them, but I'm, like, a jack-of-all-trades, you know, because that's what they're looking for in the Gote. In order to become a lieutenant, they're looking for people that are, like, well-rounded in all subjects, okay? And so, Iba trained very, very hard in all of these, and he continued to train, right? So, we also get to see his Zanpak toe at that point. Um, it looks like a scimitar, at least that's what they describe it on the wiki. I don't know, whenever I think of a scimitar, I'm a rude runescape kid growing up this is what i think of when i think of a scimitar this is this is more like a fan made out of steel you know with a little tiny pick you know sticking out of it like like a freaking pickaxe or something so um i don't know what you want to call this thing but this is his shikai um so what can it do well um I guess it uh if somebody gets hit with that little pick you know it's it's gonna hurt that thing's gonna like you know, stab you and make you bleed and stuff. So, 
that's not good. Also, I guess if he, like, you know, thrusts it, you know, with the, the fan portion, that would probably, like, you know, cut somebody's head off, I guess. So, you know, it can hurt you, definitely. Um, does it have any special keto abilities? Uh, we don't know. Uh, oh, I forgot its name, of course. Uh, its name is um, Iba Zompakto. That's, that's the name of it, because we never find out what the name is. But the release command is... Um, yeah, we don't find that out either. So, um, here we go. <laughs> and he uses it a lot. Like, there's a lot of times in the ser in the series we see him bust this thing out, but it's already released. He busts this thing out against Ikaku. We see it already released. We see him use it against Ion. He just shows up already released. I think in uh, Memories of Nobody, we see it already released. Um, a few times, maybe in some filler arcs later on, we see it already released so um yeah yeah we know it takes the form of a tanto in its sealed form and then we know it looks like this in its shikai and just like isane during the epilogue of bleach um iba actually becomes the next captain of the seventh division in this case uh with the pompadour and everything so therefore he's also achieved the bankai of this bad boy maybe his bankai is like the same exact basic shape but it has two picks. It has a pick on one side and a pick on the other side. Yeah. So it, it really is like a pickaxe. Zompakto thing. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm imagining since Iba did start with the 11th division, his Zompakto might not be keto based. It really is just based on like, you know, sheer brute force and attacking kind of things. Uh, Iba learned uh, keto maybe later on. Um, so maybe, I mean, like even if your Zompakto isn't keto based, you can still channel keto through it. Like remember when Shuhei fought against Ion, he used that Suzui Ryzen, the, the bound lightning, and he channeled the lightning uh, through the chain of Kazeshini. So so I'm imagining, you know, Iba could do that. He adds, like, you know, Sokatsui or, you know, Shakaho through the, the fan. That would actually be really cool. He uses, like, a Keto, like a fire spell, and he literally just takes his Zanpakuto and its Shikai and does, like, whoosh, and then fires off fireballs. Kind of like Tobeyume, kind of like Momo's, you know, Zanpakuto, Tobeyume. Maybe. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I guess the main thing is when you swing it, make sure the pick is facing the enemy and try to hit him with that. Maybe when you do hit somebody with the protrusion, maybe that actually does do something. Maybe you hit them and it like, you know, immobilizes the enemy or runs an electric shock through them or something. I don't know. It, it really hurts if nothing else. It'll smart if you get hit by that thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a pretty flat blade, so we can also just like hit somebody in the head with it. Like, remember that scene in One Piece when Sentomaru takes his battle axe and just smacks Damalo Black on the head? Maybe that's something like Iba could do. Um, yeah. So, um, I, you know what, though? It's something else, though, I will mention about Iba, and I went back and saw this during the epilogue, right? So, he's there. He's the captain of Squad 7. Uh, Komomura, of course, became a dog at this point, like a regular doggy, so, you know, he can't fight anymore. Uh, we'll get back to their relationship in a second, because there's something else with that I want to reference. But when we, we see him in the epilogue, he jumps off of this ridiculously high cliff. Like, he just jumps off the thing, and then, boom, slams on the ground, and, like, the ground shatters with how, how how high he jumped off of right and he gets up and Toshiro actually compliments him Toshiro's sitting there and he's like wow uh, Captain Iba you know Captain Tetsuzaimon you're so um you know energetic you always train you're putting us to shame here and Iba's like you know oh don't flatter me Captain uh, Hitsugaya you know I know that this body isn't uh, strong enough to become a captain through and through quite yet but all I can do is train every single day from dusk till dawn uh, or dawn till dusk I guess maybe maybe both of them who cares and he's like you know i'm gonna train every single day to maybe get stronger okay so you gotta say that about iba okay he became the captain of squad seven and maybe the fan base is looking at that like oh he doesn't deserve that we don't know anything about iba we don't even know what his zompakto is called we didn't really even see him fight during the final war really which we really didn't so how does he deserve to become captain of squad seven and it's just like you know what he himself realizes that. He, you know, Iba himself is kind of conflicted. He's like, well, Komamura is a doggy. Oh, you're such a good boy. But, you know, you know, it's like, I guess I have to be the new captain. But he felt like he didn't deserve it. He felt like, you know, I'm not strong enough to be a captain. And I think he also realized his own weakness. He realized, like, I'm never going to be as strong as Byaki Akuchiki. I'm never going to be as strong as Kenpachi Zaraki. All right? I'm never going to reach that level. But I think Iba didn't get discouraged by that. If anything, it, like, fired him up. He's like, well, what, what can I do? I'll tell you what I can do. 
every single morning. I'm getting up at like 3 a.m., pounding back the freaking egg yolks like Rocky, and I'm hitting the freaking track. I'm running, I'm training, I'm lifting weights, I'm doing push-ups, I'm, you know, you know, sparring with other members of the Gote and my squad, you know, I'm running hundreds of kilometers every single day, you know, like, and that's all I can do. I can train my ass off until I get stronger, and that's like, that's what he can do. And that's what he did, right? You're right. He is never going to reach Kempachi's level. He might not even ever reach Komamura's level. But he's doing the best he can. You know, what else did you ask from the guy, right? You know what I mean? And he achieved his Bankai through that. And he's like, I'm just going to work hard every day, master my Bankai. And hopefully one day I myself can wake up and, and look at my rippling muscles in the mirror. And I could say to myself, you know, I am, you know, finally accepted as the proper captain of squad seven or maybe he'll never truly know that he'll never truly accept that it's just like that's what he's always vying for you know that's his um his drive his motivation to work out every day it's like i'm not quite the captain yet but i'll get there someday gadoosh so maybe based on yes his lack of action during the series uh you say he can't be a captain maybe but in terms of his work ethic and what he's doing about it i applaud you eva you're giving it your best there you go so, aside from that moment with Ikaku and Soul Society, there's two other moments that Iba does in the series that really shine. Uh, the one is, of course, when he goes to attack Ion from behind, and he gets blasted with a Sero and instantly knocked out. You know, that scene there <laughs> was absolutely well-written. No, of course. Um, it's the knuckle debate. Okay, I mentioned this last time. So, there's a whole chapter after Ikaku gets defeated by Pau. And, um, you know, he didn't go into his Bankai, he didn't go into Ryumon Hozokimaru, and the reason Ikaku didn't do that is he didn't want anybody else of the Gote to see his Bankai, right? So he just got defeated by Pau. And so, uh, eventually Komamura shows up and goes into Kokujo Tengen Myo and defeats Pau, and then Iba shows up and he stops the pillar from, you know, regressing back into the original, uh, the, uh, the real Karakura town, right? So they kind of have to save the day. So Komamura saved everybody, and then Iba's there with Ikaku on the ground, and Iba knows full well that Ikaku has a Bankai. All right, he's not an idiot, all right? He's trained with Ikaku for so long. He was in the same division. They're kind of like brothers. And so he knows that he had a Bankai. So Iba walks right over to freaking Ikaku. And Ikaku just got beaten down by Pau, keep in mind. He's on the ground bleeding out. And freaking Iba just goes right up to him and just, bam, just clocks him right in the face. He's just like, what is wrong with you? Do you not understand the stakes here? Do you not understand what the hell we're doing? We are trying to prevent Aizen from taking over the damn Seireite. He's trying to kill the damn Soul King, who, as a member of the Gote, by the way, we are pledged to protect with our lives. And you're gonna stand down here and let yourself get kicked by one of their Fraxion just because, uh, I don't want to use my Bankai. I don't want to see other people see what I can do because, you know, I don't want to blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't care, Ikaku. I don't care. And Ikaku tries to rebuttal. He's like, hey, you don't talk to me like that. I have my reasons. BAM! Again, right in the face. It's like, no, no, that's where you're wrong, Ikaku. Your reasons. It's not about you. It's about the damn Gote. We are a military unit. We are fighting to protect the existence of everything, okay? I don't care what bullshit reason you have on why you can't use your Bankai. You could have used it. You could have beaten him. You didn't. You failed. If you would have went 100% against Pow, if you would have went into your Bankai, if you would have tried tried your best and you still failed, hey, you did you, you did what you could do. If we still had to come save your ass, that would have been fine, all right? But no, you chose to just go into Shikai and get defeated with that, and you didn't even bother, all right? And so they have this little knuckle debate there, and that was a cool chapter, a very manly chapter, and Komura was off to the side, and he's just like, ah, oh, my ears are failing me today. Ikaku, Bankai? No, I didn't hear anything. And so... Uh, Ikaku kind of gets knocked to his senses after this, and he's kind of like, all right, I understand. Uh, with that all being said, though, Ikaku doesn't really do anything else the entirety of the arc. Uh, he certainly doesn't go into Bankai. I thought that's what that was kind of setting up. You know, I thought, like, you know, Iba beating the crap out of Ikaku was setting it up like, oh, okay, so later on during Fake Karakura, you know, uh, Ikaku's gonna get healed up a little bit or whatever, and he's gonna be like, okay, now I need to go into my Bankai, but that never happens. Um, and then during the Thousand Year Blood War, he also doesn't go into his Bankai. Now, granted, granted, 
during the Thousand Year Blood War, War arc, we did get that explanation that his Bankai Hyorimaru, not Hyorimaru, Hozokimaru, uh, Ryumon Hozokimaru, actually got damaged. You know, the first time he used it against Ederad Leonis, uh, it got damaged because of how brittle and fragile it was. And so it was stated Akon kind of pasted it back together to maybe be like, you know, it, like aesthetically it looks the same, but it's certainly not as strong as it used to be. So maybe you could say that in Ikaku's defense, like, oh, okay, his Bankai was damaged and not as strong that's why he didn't use it against pow still he didn't even bother he didn't even try you know trying to use it might have actually maybe he would have won maybe he would have lost that's not the point the point is that he didn't try a hundred percent he didn't give them everything he had because of some you know reason just because he doesn't want other people to see his bankai right um you know he wanted to keep it a secret from the gote and everything right and so that was the main reason and so that's what ebo was so pissed about okay and that's why they had the knuckle debate and everything thing there so that was a moment um actually i don't even think we see outside of movies i don't think we see ikaku's bankai a single other time in the actual story mm, no maybe in a light novel or something but yeah i don't remember seeing it a single other time beyond that even in the thousand year blood war when they're fighting against like uh pernita or whatever or pernita's later and the zombies and everything he doesn't even ever try to bust it out again but whatever anyway um the next scene with iba it's not as emotional. That was kind of like Eba's highlight moment for like the entirety of the story right there, the knuckle debate. But there's one more moment that's kind of nice and it's very subtle, but it's the moment right after uh, Komamura defeats uh, Bambi. Okay, so he goes into Kokujo Tengen Mio, Dungai Joe, and then he defeats Bambi. And then his humanization technique falters, uh, you know, he, his revenge has been fulfilled. Well, not fulfilled, but the, the technique wears off there, and he turns back into just a dog. You know, not even like a regular dog where man he was before. No, he's actually just a dog now. He's like a wolf, and he can't even talk anymore, right? He can still think, though. And so he turns back into that, and he's sitting there on the ground next to his sword. He can't even pick up his sword anymore. And he's sitting there like, is this the penance I must pay for the revenge that I held in my heart? You know, I tried to save Tozen from the depths of revenge or fighting for revenge, and uh, I fell to that myself because the Quincy's killed Yamamoto, and I tried to avenge him, and look where that got me. I've now become a dog. I've turned into a dog, you know? And I didn't even get to defeat their, their boss. I only defeated one of the Stern Raiders and I didn't even get a chance to fight against Yuha, right? And so he's on the ground there kind of lamenting his, like, decisions. It's like, did I really do the right thing? I guess I didn't. I guess I failed. And then that's when Iba shows up, and Iba doesn't say anything about the fact, like, oh, Captain, you're a dog now. That's crazy. No, Iba shows up and just grabs him and, you know, hoists him up, and he's like, all right, Captain, let's get going. And it's like, and Komamura can't talk to him because he can't speak anymore. And so Iba, though, just, like, without even kind of hearing the voice, without just, like, looking in Komamura's doggy eyes, he's like, don't worry, Captain. You did the right thing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't doubt yourself. You did the right thing. Now let's go beat Yuha's ass. And then they walk away into the distance, and um, that's it. I think we see them one more time. Uh, when all of the different uh, captains are gathering together to get shot to the Seireite, not the Seireite, the Soul Palace by Urahara, uh, they mention, like, okay, is everybody gathered here? And Urahara, I think, says, or maybe it was Shinji, is like, uh, oh, well, Squad 7 decided to uh, not accept medical help, and they said they're going to fight on their own from now on. And then we get just a shot of Iba and Komamura walking, you know, side by side. And I imagine Komamura is still a member of Squad 7. He's still there. You know, it's like Iba hanging out on his throne with Komamura, this badass wolf next to him. You know, and he's like there. He's still a member of the squad and everything. Uh, but Iba, Iba didn't like say, he's like, oh, Captain, you fell to the depths of revenge and look what happened. He's like, no, Captain, it's like... They killed our, our commanding officer. You did what you had to do. They stole your bankai, and then they killed Yamamoto. You did what you had to do, all right? And it's like you're such a good person throughout this entirety of the story, and you tried to live up to the law and justice as much as you were able to, um, probably more so than a lot of the members of the Gote do. And so no one's going to blame you for what you did. You defeated one of their top officers, okay? You defeated a Sternritter. We're not going to, you know, it's like, so don't, don't doubt yourself. Don't think that you did the wrong thing. Um, and at the end of the day now, Komamura really can't fight anymore. But, you know, for his personality, 
maybe that's for the best. You know, he does. He's not. He doesn't have to be involved in this war, or these battles anymore, and he gets to spend the rest of his existence just kind of like thinking things over. Uh, maybe he's going to become the next wise elder, like his Falcor dog grandfather was. You know, like that's going to be Komamura's future. Um, and so maybe he could give advice to the Beast Clan and maybe change it in the future. Maybe something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, that was another moment with Eba, and it's not much, but it was something else I wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring up to attention. Okay, so yeah, though, uh, beyond that, uh, not really much more from the guy, but he did have a sweet mustache. You gotta give him that much. He had a sweet mustache, and the shades, and the cat tattoo. All right, so um, anything to add, Cloneberry001? Barry, anybody? No? Okay, well, uh, I guess... We'll just move on to the next one. We have the poster over here. All right, so uh, I think Ebo was, what, the sixth or the seventh? So we're, I think we're about halfway done through this. Okay, so uh, who's going to be next? Uh, round and round and round you go. Let's see here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, uh, I'm going to say right here. That is, oh, okay, cool. Uh, Momo, Momo's next. Sweet. Oh, oh, poor Momo. <laughs> poor Momo. Oh, man. The character in Bleach, or like the top 10 characters in Bleach that were just emotionally messed with the most in this story, um, Momo would probably be in the top three. Yeah, she would be up there, definitely. Uh, the stuff with Aizen, and then Aizen again, and... Jeez, okay, so, um, yeah, we'll get uh, Momo uh, Hinamori next time, uh, Lieutenant of Squad 5. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Have a good one, Tekig, signing out. Oh, man. Poor Momo.